Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavalaba Giri Varandari Gopi Janavalaba Giri Varadari Jashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan, Shri Govinda Gopinath, Madana Mohan. (laughs) 
Jai Om Vishnu Bhad Paramahamsa Parivraja Gacharya Ashto Tadashata Shri Srimad His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shida Prabhupada Ki Jai Krantara Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Nitai Gaura Premanande Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naranchayvan Rotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasan Tato Jayam Udirayet Nasupraya Shurabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nandanaya Cha Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya namo namaha. So we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 19, Text Number 24, The Island of Jambudweep. Na, Na. Yatra, Yatra. Vaikunta, Kata, Sudha Panga, Na, Saravo Bhagavatas Tadashraya Na Yatra Yagesha Maka Mahotsava Suresha Loko Bi Na Vai Sa Sevyatam Nayatra Vaikunta Katasada Paga Nasara Vo Bhagavatastara Shraya Nayatra Yegyesha Makama Hotsava Suresha Lokopi Navai Save Savyatam Nadiyatra Vaikunta Katha Sudapaka Nasaravo Bhagavatas Tarashaya Nayatra Yegyashmaka Mahotsava Suresha Loko Pina Vaisa Savyatam Nayatra Vaikunta Katha Sudapaka Nasaravo Bhagavatas Tarashaya Nayatra Yegesha Makama Hotsava Suresha Loka Pimna Vaisa Savyatam Yes, 
Zoom. Okay. Najatra Jagdesha Makash Mahotsava Najatra Makamahotsava Shri Shuloko Pina Vaisha Shri Vratam Na Not Yatra Where Vaikunta Kata Sudapaka the nectarian rivers of, discri- of discussions about the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is called Vaikuntha or one who drives away all anxiety. Na, Na. <laughs> nor, sadhava, devotees, Bhagavata, always engaged in the service of the Lord, Tadashayaha, who are sheltered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Na, not. Oh, nor. <laughs> Yatra, <coughs> where? Yagya Ishamaka, the performance of devotional service to the Lord of Sacrifice. Maha Utsava, which are actual festivals. Suresh Loko, a place inhabited by the denizens of heaven. Api, although, not, not. Vai, certainly. Saha, that. Sevyatam, be frequented. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. An intelligent person does not take interest in a place even if the topmost planetary system, even in the topmost planetary system, if the pure Ganges of topics concerning the Supreme Lord's activities does not flow there. If there are not devotees engaged in the service on the banks of such a river of piety, or if there are no festivals of Sankirtan Yoga to satisfy the Lord, especially since Sankirtan Yoga is recommended in this age. Purport. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the land of Bharat Varsha. 
specifically in Bengal and the district of Nadia, where Navadweep is situated, it is therefore to be concluded, as stated by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that within this universe, this earth is the best planet. And on this planet, the land of Bharat Varsha is the best. And in the land of Bharat Varsha, Bengal is still better. In Bengal, the district of Nadia is still better. And in Nadia, the best place is Navadweep, because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared there to inaugurate the performance of the sacrifice of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The Shastras recommend Krishna Varnam Tusa Krishna. Sango Pangasta Parsidam Yagyar Sankirtanir Prayer Yajantihi Sumeda Saha. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahapur was always accompanied by his very confidential associates, such as Sri Nityananda, Sri Gadadhara, Sri Advaita, and by many devotees like Srivas. They are always engaged in chanting the name of the Lord and are always describing Lord Krishna. Therefore, this is the best among all the places in the universe. The Krishna Consciousness Movement has established its center in Mayapur, the birth site of Lord Sri Titanya Mahaprabhu, to give men the great opportunity to go there and perform a constant festival of Sankirtan Yagya, as recommended herein, Yagyesha Maka Mahotsavaha, and to distribute prasad to millions of hungry people hankering for spiritual emancipation. This is the mission of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Chaitanya, the Chaitanya Bhagavat confirms this as follows. One should not desire to be elevated even to a place in the heavenly planetary systems if it has no propaganda to expand the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. No, traces of Vi no trace of Vaishnavas, pure devotees of the Lord, and no festivals for spreading Krishna consciousness. It would be better to live perpetually crammed within the airtight bag of a mother's womb, where one can at least remember the lotus feet of the Lord, than to live in a place where there is no opportunity to remember his lotus feet. I pray not to allow, I pray not to be allowed to take birth in such a condemned place. Similarly, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami says that since Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the inaugurator of the Sankirtan movement, anyone who performs Sankirtan to please the Lord is very, very glorious. Such a person has perfect intelligence, whereas others are in the ignorance of material existence. Of all the sacrifices mentioned in the Vedic literatures, the performance of Sankirtan Yagya is the best. Even the performance of 100 Ashvamedha sacrifices cannot compare to the sacrifice of Sankirtan. According to the author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, if one compares Sankirtan Yagya to other Yagyas, he is a Pashanti, an infidel, and is liable to be punished by Yamaraj. There are many Mayavadis who think that the performance of Sankirtan is a pious activity similar to the performance of the Ashvamedha Yagya and other such pious functions. But this is a Nam Aparad. Chanting of the holy name of Narayana and chanting of other names are never equal, despite what Mayavadis think. Namashreshtam Manu Api Sachi Putram Matrasvarupam Shirupam Tasya Grajam Udupadim Mathurim Gosvaratim Radha Kundam Girivaram Maho Radhika Maravam Sam Prapto Yasya Patita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tamnatos Me He Garog Yanadadi Nabando Swadanandai Karunakakasindu Vrindavana Sinahita Avatar Prasiddharada Pranaya Pachar Namo Mahavada Naya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gaur Sena Maha Vancha Kalpatrum Bistya Kripa Sindhu Revacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Bas Adi Gaurav Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Agisha Yasya Varane Lakshmi Yasya Chavakshashi Yasya Shte Hridaye Sambit Tam Nashim Ham Ham Bhaje When the devotees first started going to Mayapur, they asked Prabhupada, what are we supposed to do here? He said, all you have to do is chant and dance. So Mayapur is a very, uh, very, very special place. And the glories of Mayapur are actually spoken about very extensively in a nice book by Bhaktivinoda Thakur called Navadweep Dham Mahatmya, which means the glories of Sri Navadweep Dham. 
So it's explained there that the land of Garanga Mahaprabhu is non-different from the land of Krishna. Um, it's two flavors in one container. So there's just different moods, but it's the same place. In fact, those who consider there to be a difference um, are considered to possess a, a, a materialistic disposition. They're not able to understand things properly. Because although Vrindavan and although Mayapur may be existing in two different geographical locations, the Acharyas explain that they're non-different from each other. So although they're non-different from each other, why is it that Bhaktivinoda Thakur in this purport, Srila Prabhupada is quoting him saying that of all the planets in the universe, the earth is the best. Of all the places on earth, Bhart Varsha is the best. Of all the places in Bhart Varsha, Bengal is the best. Of all the places in Nadia, I mean all the places in Bengal, Nadia is the best. And of all the places in the district of Nadia, Navadweep Dham is the best. Now why is Bhaktivinoda Thakur saying this? So it's explained that although Vrindavan and Mayapur are non-different from each other, um, like I said, there's a difference in taste. And in Bolvar Vrindavan, the mood, the rasa, is a, uh, a feeling of madhurya, which means sweetness. So everything in Vrindavan is overwhelmingly sweet. There's this nice pastime, nice verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam. I don't know the Sanskrit, but I know the description where it's describing Krishna and the cowherd boys coming home from Vrindavan around four o'clock in the afternoon. And Krishna's covered in dust. The cows are mooing. The cowherd boys are in a very jovial mood. Mother Yashoda is in ecstasy waiting to greet Krishna. The gopis are along the road and Krishna is, you know, casting sidelong glances at them. And it's just a, it's just a, it's a festival for the heart and the mind to, to see this taking place. And this is just one segment of the day um, of Krishna's pastimes, but every portion of Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan is this type of atmosphere, this type of sweetness, this type of exchange of love. So all these things, Vrindavan, uh, the forests of Vrindavan, um, Govardhan Hill, Nandagram, all these places are are very enchanting for, for the heart and for the mind. To hear about them, to go there, to be there, it's very, it's very special. And Srila Prabhupada, as early as 1966, he said that my heart, although I'm living here in New York, you can hear this recording, it's one of the first recordings available. If you listen to Srila Prabhupada's lectures chronologically, which I, which I highly recommend, um, around, I think, the third or fourth lecture, Prabhupada is saying, although I'm living here in Vrindavan, I'm, no, sorry, sorry. Although I'm living here in New York, my heart is constantly hankering for Vrindavan, that sacred place. So the, the nature of Vrindavan is it, it completely enchants the mind and the heart when one has qualification to, to perceive it properly. Prabodhananda Saraswati, he's so emphatic about residence in Vrindavan and taking shelter of Vrindavan that he explains that even if he has to lose his hands or legs, even if he has to be subjected to criticism, or even if he has to be living in an invalid condition, somehow or other he has to take shelter of Vrindavan. So this is the mood of Prabodhananda Saraswati, and this is the mood of our Acharyas. So the scriptures praise the exalted nature of Vrindavan endlessly. There's many books by the Acharyas which is describing how wonderful Vrindavan is and how important Vrindavan is. But despite the fact that these glories exist, to actually perceive Vrindavan, one needs to have Krishna Prema. Premanjanachurita bhakti vilochanena santasa deva hritidesi vilokayanti yam shama sundaram achintya gunasvarupam govindamari purusham tamaham bhajambi that in order to perceive Krishna one needs to have eyes which are anointed with love. So there's different uh, phases of Vrindavan Dham. There's Goloka Vrindavan, which is existing in the spiritual world. There's Bhoma Vrindavan, which is the Vrindavan which Krishna was existing in while on this planet. And then there's Jistya, Jistya Yamana Vrindavan, which is the Vrindavan which is currently existing now in which Krishna has left. So it becomes covered by an energy called the Antardana Shakti. And this Antardana Shakti is meant to um, protect the Dham 
from those who have a, a, a materialistic disposition or those who have an atheistic disposition. It's meant to protect the Dom and it makes it very unattractive for them. So many people would say, one time someone visited Prabhupada when he was living in Vrindavan. And he said, why did you choose to live in this dirty, dusty town? And the thing was, he wasn't able to perceive the actual opulence of Vrindavan because it's, it's covered for those who don't have genuine love for Krishna. So we're in a bit of a problem because although the glories of Vrindavan are pronounced and the, the infinite glory of Vrindavan is unlimited, um, that, was, that was redundant. The glory of Vrindavan is unlimited. Um, very few people are able to attain Krishna Prema. And this is explained by Rupa Goswami in the Nectar of Devotion. That it's, the Krishna Prema is a very rarefied thing to even achieve. So, if we don't have Krishna Prema, then um, we're not going to be able to approach Vrindavan and really access the sweetness that it's able to offer. So this question is brought up in the Navadweep Dham Mahatmya and Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He explains the reason why we're not able to perceive Vrindavan and the reason why we're not able to attain Krishna Prema is for one reason, and it's due to offenses. Bahu Janma Kari Yari Shavana Kirtana Tapu Tana Paya Krishna Pare Prema Dhan that even if one goes on chanting Hare Krishna, the Maha Mantra, for many, many lifetimes, if one is infested with offenses, then they'll never achieve the love of God, which is the ultimate goal of their chanting. So offenses is the most pernicious of all the narthas which are contaminating our heart that prevent us from loving Krishna. There's different types of anarthas, but of all the anarthas, offenses are the ones that will stick with us the longest. Even, even as one overcomes, you know, lower tendencies and develops some spiritual strength in order to control the mind and the senses, practically up until the point one is perceiving Krishna directly in front of them, um, offenses will still be, will be limiting them from making progress. And the most dangerous of all offenses is Vaishnava Parad, to criticize those who are um, engaging in propagating the mission of of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be propagating the mission of Krishna to offend those devotees who have taken up this sacrifice it's considered to be very very offensive so we see that when offenses aren't present such as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was initiated by Keshava Bharati Keshava Bharati told him you know you're, you're, too, you're, you're too much of a fool to be able to study Vedanta so don't even try what you need to do is you need to chant Hare Krishna. So once he, once he started chanting, he said, Krishna nama maha mantra eta swabhava ye japi tari krishna upajaya bhava. So what, what is this verse saying? It's saying that the swabhava, the maha mantra, is that whoever chants it, they immediately develop love for Krishna. So if we're chanting Hare Krishna and we're not developing love, then we can understand that the reason why is because we have a steel-framed heart, the Bhagavatam explains. And what is the what is what is the what is the what is the steel made out of? Is it made out of iron? Is it made out of gold? Is it made out of um, so many different types of metals? What what is the the ingredients for this for this fence between us and the chanting? And that fence is is anarthas, particularly offenses to the holy name. There's different types of offenses. There's offenses to jivas, which is just you're on sankirtan and you. You know, you blaspheme a jiva. I'm definitely a victim of this. Um, or I'm, I've put myself in a position, I'm a perpetrator of this. Um, and there's seva aparad, means you're worshiping the deity, but you're not attentive to what you're doing, and you just oversee it. And you also don't make an effort to overcome the offense. Um, there's various ways in which one can overcome an offense in the, de in the worshiping of deities. There's, I'm pretty sure there's prayers back there. Very common. You're supposed to recite that. But you can also recite a chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And that helps one overcome offenses and save Aparad. And then there's Dham Aparad, which means that one offends the Holy Dham. There's different offenses. Bhaktivinoda and Thakur explains. There's about ten. And then there's Nam Aparad. And Nam Aparad is the most pernicious because 
If one isn't attentive in the chanting of Hare Krishna and avoiding the offenses, Nama Aparada is very, very difficult to overcome. Seva Aparada, Dhamma Aparada, um, Jiva Aparada, these can be eradicated just by the nature of bhakti itself. So if we're, if we're, not, if we're chanting, but we're not developing love for Krishna, then we should, we should understand that there's, we're, we're in a diseased condition. We're not in a healthy condition of life. We should be developing love for Krishna. Kritya sadya bhavat sadya bhavasa sadhanabhita nitya siddhasya bhavasya prakritam hridya sadhyata that the whole point of sadhana is to develop love for Krishna. So if we're not developing love for Krishna, then there's a problem. But those who have love for Krishna, um, then they're considered pure devotees. Evam vrata swa priya nama kirtya jatanu rago jita chuta uchar astiyato rotiti roti gayan un maravan nirindandi loka bayaha. So after um, uh, Keshava Bharti recited this previous verse to, after he explained that the nature of chanting Hare Krishna is that one becomes mad in love of Krishna, the way he um, authenticated that statement was he quoted this verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, which he explained is the essence of the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. The whole goal of the Bhagavatam is contained within this verse. And that's that when one takes up a vrata in chanting Hare Krishna, then the, the outcome is that one, um, they begin to cry tears, they begin to roll on the floor in ecstasy, and their nature is that they become completely indifferent to public opinion, and they chant and dance in, in complete bliss and ecstasy. There's a really nice purport in this verse for the, in the 11th canto. And one can, I think it's 11.340 is the verse number. So anyone who's keeping score, they can look up this purport at the end of class. Really nice purport. So he recited this verse. And so this is, this is the goal of, what we're, of where we're trying to move in our chanting. And Bhakti, said, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says that at the expense of all of his properties, mats, temples, and he had a lot of them. Um, I think he established 64 temples in India. What to speak of you know, all the temples that Srila Prabhupada established around the world. Now you can imagine, there's about, I think, 900 temples in, in the world now. Prob we're probably reaching near 1,000. I don't know the number. Does anyone know the number of temples? Is around 900, 1,000? We'll just say that. So 900 or 1,000 temples. Now you can imagine, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he said that at the expense of all his mats and temples, he, if he could make one person a devotee, then, then he would consider his mission a success. So even if it meant selling all of our properties and you know, losing our, um, our infrastructure as a movement, if one person was able to become a devotee because of that, a pure devotee with Krishna Prema, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says is, is worth the trade-off. So the ultimate goal of our chanting is to attain this Krishna Prema. And the holy name can give that prema. But due to offenses, we're not experiencing it. So how do we become free from offenses? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. How do we become free from these offenses? How do we become, become free from these anarthas? So Bhaktivinoda Thakuri explains that these offenses, these anarthas are like fog, which cover, our, which cover the holy name. And so in order for that fog to be dissipated, we need a very, very powerful sun. Vande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityanando Samohito Godyaya Pushpanvato Chitro Sado Tamo Nudo. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda have arisen on the eastern uh, horizon of Bengal as the sun and moon. Now, most of the time, the sun and moon don't rise at the same time, but they've risen simultaneously and they're giving this Krishna, Krishna consciousness, and which, is, which is removing. The, the clouds of ignorance. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that the most suitable thing for souls that are residing in Kali Yuga to do is to hear the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hearing the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very, very conducive to developing love for Krishna because although Krishna takes offense if we're not qualified to be hearing his pastimes. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his pastimes are being freely distributed. And there's no consideration of who's qualified and who's not qualified. So because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is non-different from 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the most uncommon person because he's non-different from Radha and Krishna. Uh, Shri, uh, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha, Krishna, Nahi, Anya. That Radha and Krishna have combined and they have become Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And because, he, because, of, because even if Radha and Krishna become offended, if someone takes shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he doesn't pay attention to their, to their offensive disposition. Actually, instead of becoming punished for their offenses, those who take shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that Krishna Prema comes running after them. So, just as Krishna is non-different from Vraj, Aradiyo Bhagavan Vrajesha Staniyasta Dhamma Vrindavanam. Similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is non-different in the Navadweep Dham. This is explained by Narottam Das Thakur. What's that shloka? Dhrivida Prabhu in that song. You know what I'm talking in Goranga Dui Pada. Okay, you don't know it? Okay. Yeah, I should have written it down. So the nature of Raj is Madhurya, and the nature of Mayapur is Adhurya. So Madhurya is sweetness, and Adhurya is magnanimity. So this magnanimity is the nature of, of, of Mayapur. And as I said earlier, there are two flavors in one container. So it's Vrindavan is non-different from Mayapur, Mayapur is non-different from Vrindavan. The only difference is the rasa. So the overwhelming rasa of Mayapur is Adhurya, which means that the sweetness is overflowing, the cup is full, and the, the nectar is still, still pouring into the cup. So what's happening to the cup? Nectar is overflowing and it's being distributed to everyone. So, as I like to say, Mayapur is, is a place where mercy is dripping from the trees. It's a very powerful place. And for those who would generally be punished in Vrindavan, they're liberated in Mayapur. So whoever goes there is freed from all offenses. And we should see that the Dham isn't just another part of our Krishna consciousness. We shouldn't just think that it's a break from Sankirtan, it's a break from preaching in the West. But rather, we should see that, just like everything that we're doing in Krishna consciousness, we should see how it's moving us towards that goal of sadhana. It's moving us towards the goal of Krishna prema. It's moving us to the goal of Baba Bhakti. And that it's, it's playing a role, just like a jigsaw puzzle. You can take so many different pieces, and you should see how it fits into the complete picture, rather than just understanding it as some separate thing that's different from our ultimate achievement. So for those who take shelter of Mayapur, um, they in due course of time begin to perceive the presence of Raj within Mayapur itself. And Navadweep Dham Mahatmya describes that all the holy places of Vrindavan, they're existing in Mayapur. Nandagram is existing in Godrumadweep, Radhakund is existing in um, Ritu Dweep, Govardhan Hill is existing in Kola Dweep, all the places that are existing in Vrindavan are existing in Mayapur. And all the benefit that one would get from Vrindavan, one can get from Mayapur. The only difference is that if one commits offenses in Mayapur, they're not taken seriously. But in Vrindavan, they're taken very seriously. It's very severe. So even if one inadvertently makes a mistake in Vrindavan, they're punished. But in Mayapur, if one inadvertently makes a mistake due to their Kali Yuga conditioning, those offenses aren't taken very seriously due to the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, how Vrindavan manifests itself within Mayapur is described in the life of our Acharyas. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he went there to chant his, I think, ten, what, one billion names? Yeah. One billion names in ten years. And Janani Vas explains in a story, because if you go to Chaitanya Mat, which is the flagship temple of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati in Mayapur, if you go to that temple, you'll see that Govardhan Hill is there, you'll see that Radhakund is there, you'll see Shamakund is there. So Janani Vas was, was wondering, and he asked the, the Acharya who was staying at the Chaitanya Mat, why is it that Radhakund, Shamakund, and Govardhan Hill is here, when in the Navadweep Dham Mahatmya, it's described as being in Ritu Dweep? Because Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, one of his goals, one of his missions was to reveal Mayapur Dham. So, Jananivas explains that it was because um, 
Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's bhajan was so intense at that time that it actually manifested Vrindavan within Mayapur. So in that small place at Chandrasekhar Bhavan where, Ch where Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was chanting those one billion names of Krishna, Radhakun, Shamakun, and Govardhan Hill manifested themselves. And this is to show the conditioned souls that yes, Vrindavan is ex existing here. And yes, this is a place that one should take shelter of. And it's actually the most appropriate for those who are living in Kali Yuga. And Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, he set the same example. He would split his time between Vrindavan and Mayapur. And the, the Babajis of Vrindavan were asking him, why do you spend all this time going all the way to Mayapur? And out of his humility he said, because I'm a very fallen person and I need the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what do we learn from all of this? Rupa Goswami explains to Nama Rupa Charita Sisakir Tananu Smrid Yor Karmena Rasanam Anasina Yoja Tistan Vrajay Tananuragi Janan Ugami Kalam Nayet Akilam Ityu Badesha Sharam Rupa Goswami is so merciful that he wrote, he gave us the best advice possible. And what is that advice? He explained that the Sharam, the cream of all advice, Upadesha Amrita, the, the, where this verse is coming from, it's considered to be the nectar of advice. So what is the cream of that nectar? What is the essence of that nectar? He explains that the essence of all advice is to utilize one's time 24 hours a day and hearing and chanting about Krishna. And one should do this in Vrindavan while simultaneously falling in the footsteps of a Vrajavasi. This is the essence of all advice. And so because Mayapur is non different from the Vraj and its mood is the most accessible to the Kali Yugites, it's a place where we should constantly reside. It's a place where we should always be in the consciousness of. And Rupa Goswami explains, and this is very relevant to us, that if one can't reside there physically, one should reside there mentally. So although we're pushing on a worldwide movement, and although we have so many responsibilities in the land of um, Mano Dharma Desh, as Prithu Prabhu once told me, in North America. Although we have so many responsibilities here, and although we may not be able to constantly be physically residing in Mayapur Dham, we should always be there within our heart. As my Guru Maharaj says, if you can't be there, feel there. So how do we reside in Mayapur mentally? It's actually, very quite, it's actually quite simple. One simply follows the advice of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and absorbs their emotions and their minds in the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Dev and simultaneously make ourselves peons of the Sankirtan movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is following the advice of Rupa Goswami and it's most appropriate for us. We reside in Mayapur and we hear and chant about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in due course of time, we will develop an attraction for the land of Raj. And not only will we develop an attraction for the land of Raj, we'll develop a qualification for it. So in relationship to this, a Sankirtan devotee, I'm not going to share his name because he specifically told me not to tell anyone about this. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell all the story, but I'm not going to mention his name. Sankirtan devotee, who I've been in Mayapur with, he was telling me that um, he had a dream once. And he was distributing books at a music festival, like we do in America. He was going through all the rows. And anyone who hasn't been to a music festival, a music festival is basically like a refugee camp with a bunch of tents everywhere. And everyone's just kind of smoking and drinking and doing all sorts of nonsense things while they're camping there. And, uh, you know, he was walking through the camps, distributing books, meeting all the people. And then he came... What happens is at like the end of the row, it kind of opens up and then like the property ends. So I guess he came to the end of the row and then once you get to the end of the row, you kind of turn back and you get all the tents you, didn't, you weren't able to meet. So he got to the end of the row and he saw this old house at the end of the row. So he decided to walk inside the house. And when he walked inside the house, there was this brahmachari there cooking, a, ba a Bengali brahmachari. He was there cooking. And he said, uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, what, what is this place? And he said, this is a Bhakti Vijay Bhavan of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So my, my friend, he, he, was, he said, well, can I go see Maharaj's quarters? He said, not only can you see Maharaj's quarters, you can meet Maharaj. So they went upstairs 
And if, if anyone that's been to Chaitanya Mat, this house is there actually. And you can, if you, if you speak to one of the sannyasis that runs the Mat, you can ask a Maharaj Darshan, and they'll go. And then it brings you upstairs. So my friend, he said he went upstairs and there was Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur sitting there. And then he woke up from his dream. So he apparently, he told me that he didn't take the dream very seriously when he first had it. He said, oh, that was pretty cool. But then what happened was the year that he told me this story, we were on Navadweep Dham Parikram together. Navadweep Dham Parikram is a parikram that takes place during Gaurapanima time. It's a nine-day festival where, every, where you circumulate Navadweep Dham. So he, we, were, we'd, we had come to the Chaitanya Math and different stories were being told. And then Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj was beginning to describe that house and how it was the house of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and how there's a brahmachari that still takes care of it now. And it all clicked for him. So what is the point that I'm trying to get across with this story? It's that by being engaged in the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by taking in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and aligning ourselves with the goal of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through the activities and the sadhana we're engaging in now. We're actually residing in Navadweep Dham. Bhava Vidad Bhagavatas Tirtha Bhutta Swayam Babo. Tirtha Kurvanti Tirthani Swata Stena Gatabrata. And this verse is exactly what Srila Prabhupada did. He was constantly residing in Vrindavan within his mind, his heart. And because he was constantly residing in Vrindavan with his mind and his heart, he made that place available to everyone. So we should meditate. The name of the Iskhan temple in Mayapur is the Mayapur Chandradoya Mandir. Mayapur Chandradoya means the rising moon of Mayapur, of Lord Chaitanya. So we should pray to become a ray for that rising moon. And when we do that, we actually become... Tirthas ourselves, and a tirtha literally means a bridge. So simply by people interacting with us, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, we can actually transport people to Navadweep Dham. Om Tat Sat. So any questions or comments? One quick comment. On this uh, very important word describing Lord Chaitanya and his Dham, Audarya, 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 and um, you mentioned that it's uh, magnanimous, and you'll find in Prabhupada's books, he often describes Lord Chaitanya as very magnanimous, and uh, you know I work with these words all the time. So, Audarya, I, I just looked that up in the Sanskrit dictionary, the first. Definition is munificent, mm. and then two two words. There's only like four different words describing, and uh, and and the fourth word is magnanimous. Now those two words in English have distinct meanings. Munificent means very very generous. When we say namo mahabadanyaya, badanyaya comes from dana. That's giving out Krishna prema freely. That's that's munificent. But, his, but, Lord, but, but Lord Chaitanya is also magnanimous, meaning he forgives easily, hmm. which is like we were describing about the Holy Dham. So this, this happens in, in, in Prabhupada's uh, translations a lot. He takes the, the Sanskrit word, Audarya, and uh, he, he, most of the time he calls it mag magnanimous, but then he'll, sometimes he'll say munificent. Because it's a, comp it's, it's a compound. It means both of those things. Mm. But if you just say one of them in English, you don't get the other one. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Lord Chaitanya is not only magnanimous, but he's also munificent. <laughs> in other words, he's Audarya. So it's uh -huh. important to remember that, that Sanskrit is such a wonderful language. It can mean both those things. There's other words like that, which I won't get into now. But, I, but when, when uh, you know, working on Prabhupada's books, sometimes I'm saying, oh, Prabhupada's saying he's magnanimous, which he certainly is, but, he, but the context is he's munificent, because they, they, they seem to, if you use that one word, adarya, it means both. So, but it's a very important concept. 
the, the magnanimity, magnanimity is personified in the Jagamalai pastime. Mm. And the munificence is there giving prema to everybody. You know? yeah. Yeah. Actually, in Navadweep Dhammahamya, when Bhaktivinoda Thakur is describing the accommodating nature of Mayapur, he specifically references the Jagai and Madai pastime. Mm. So it's nice that you... Also, just one quick point in the purport that pur- pur- there were probably is talking about in the, in the whole of the world, the most blessed Bharata Barsha, then you're going to... That's right from, the, as you may know, from the beginning of Jaiva Dharma. That's mm. how Jaiva Dharma begins. He's quoting directly. Hare Krishna Prabhu, we have two questions pending on the Zoom. Okay. From well, person. Is there any uh, contributions in the live studio audience? Okay. You got my phone for a second. But it was the uh, Seva Aparad, the like Dom Shnava, Aparad, yeah, Dom Aparad, and Nam, Jiva Aparad. And Nam Aparad. So, but those three, besides Nam Aparad, you were saying Bhakti itself can clear those. Yeah, yeah. Why not Nam Aparad? Well, Bhakti well because Aparad. Nam Aparad, my understanding is that the Holy Name is extremely merciful. So if one if one neglects it, then um, there's a very severe reaction. I'd actually have to I'd actually have to look into it a little bit more. It's probably mentioned in Harinam Chintamani. Um, unless the Travita Prabhu or Vijay Prabhu have anything to contribute on this particular regard, but I do know that of all the aparads, Nam Aparad is considered to be the most pernicious. It's interesting that bhakti wouldn't solve it. That's the kind of the confusion I'm at. Actually, right. a lot of a lot of the even a lot of the nam aparads, they can kind of they can work themselves out in due course of time, so to speak, provided one is having intense attentive practice. But there's a few that can't, and particularly Vaishnava aparad. Is there's this idea that. If you keep on chanting, yeah, and you keep on chanting, you keep on yeah. chanting, then eventually you'll chant offenselessly. Yeah. Now, of course, then there's other statements. Oh, well, you could be chanting offensively for yeah. millions of lives. <laughs> You're not going to get the goal. So, anyways, both things are kind of. But there's also this idea in the Haridam Chintamani Vaish, uh, dealing with Vaishnava Parad and also Madhuri Kadambani about. Okay, how how do you get free from Vaishnava Parat? Okay, you go to that Vaishnava and you apologize sincerely mm-hmm. and you offer some service, right? Um, but then but then it said in Madhuri Kadabadi that still I mean generally the Vaishnava will forgive you, but sometimes not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what are you supposed to do? Because we just think Oh, I offended a devotee. I'll just go to I'll just go to him. And sometimes, I mean, because things could be done superficially as well. Like, okay, it says, I, I know he likes mangoes, so I go up to this Vaishnava and I, oh, sorry, Prabhu, for offending you. And here's some mangoes, and it's kind of like a what do you call mechanical. Mm. Of course, anyways, everything should be done sincerely. But but even if it's done sincerely, um, still it says the Vaishnava that might not forgive you. Yeah. So what do you do? And then he says there, well, you have to take shelter of the chanting. Yep. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yeah. And then eventually that will, you know. Yeah. Um, so anyways, there's a few things going on there. Yeah, that's a good point. And another thing that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says in the Chaitanya Bhagavat is that there was a pastime where someone was being very offensive to his devotees. And then this person... This person kind of re- like recognized the air in his ways. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you know, previously you drank the ne- you drank the poison of blaspheming Vaishnavas. So now the only remedy is to drink the nectar of glorifying Vaishnavas. So if one commits an offense, one should rectify that offense with the person. And one should simultaneously seek re- remuneration, or what's the word called? Yeah, you could say reconciliation, but it's like after you after you seek forgiveness, you simultaneously make an effort to reparation. Yeah, 
Yeah, reparation. You, so you make an effort to show that you are, you're sincerely apologetic. You're sin, you sincerely. And one of the ways that you can do that is obviously you take shelter of the holy name and simultaneously you glorify the Vaishnavas. And really that's the only remedy for Vaishnava Parad. Just avoiding it in general. It's just one should develop a sobhav where, or a nature in which they don't criticize Vaishnavas. And they are constantly speaking about how wonderful Vaishnavas are. Like you see Jayananda Prabhu. I've, there's this nice book by Vishoka Prabhu. I haven't read it all, but I've read some of it. But one particular thing that stood out to me was that whenever someone would start like speaking critically of a devotee, Jayananda would just get up and walk away. <laughs> So, we have to be careful. We have to be very careful. Because Vaishnavas are very, very rare. Um, Sudurlaba, they're very, very rare beings. And we should offer them all respect and glorify them for the sacrifice that they're taking up and giving Krishna consciousness to other people. With Balaram's point that some of my defended devotee and he goes to this devotee and he doesn't really accept the apology. Mm. But Krishna sees it. Yeah. This person may have big false ego, he just doesn't accept, but Krishna sees it. So you, you please Krishna, so you become free of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I think that's why that point of taking shelter of the holy name is there. Because you've, you've taken shelter of the Vaishnava, you've apologized, he didn't forgive you, so now you're just taking shelter of Krishna. Krishna, please forgive me. I made a mistake. You <laughs> yes, you mentioned that in Vrindavan, when you when you make an offense, the reaction is very strong. Yeah. But uh, what if you perform some glorious service? The reaction would also be. Well, the thing is with Vrindavan and Mayapur, is that any service that you do, any devotional service you perform, you get a thousand times the benefit. But it goes the other way as well. And the point that's that's really being made by our acharyas, it's not that we don't take shelter of Vrindavan. But we do it through the medium of Mayapur. And one can go to Boma Vrindavan and take inspiration from it. But if one is a neophyte, it can be very dangerous to reside there. And you see in Vrindavan, even now, people go there for so many different reasons. Like, when I was in Vrindavan recently, it's like, you, the thing is, you're getting people from all over the different, different place, parts of the world. And they're all coming with different ideas of what Krishna consciousness is different ways of being trained, different ways of practicing, and they're all in one place. And so if one hasn't developed the proper disposition towards devotional service and understanding what Vrindavan is, then due to their conditioned nature, they could easily make a mistake. They could offend a Vrajvasi, they could you know, offend a devotee, they could do so many different things. And it could just be a, a circumstantial error but that circumstantial error is taken very seriously. So we, should, we have to be very, very careful in Vrindavan. We have to be very careful in Mayapur, but our circumstantial conditional errors aren't taken that seriously in Mayapur. And you still get the benefit that you would get from residing in Vrindavan. Also about the uh, offending Vaishnavas. Uh, Vaishnavs. Aren't Vaishnavas supposed to be very merciful and forgiving in, in the first place? Yeah. And to not hold grudges yeah, and to forgive can. easily? Yeah, that's, and that's, and that's, that's generally the, the instance. But there can still be instances in which, you know, you're, you're dealing with a Vaishnav who's still conditioned. And, you know, they may not forgive you. And um, so then you should try to serve them. And even if after serving them, they don't forgive you, then you have to take shelter of Krishna. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, devotional service isn't static. It's not like a black and white process. It's dynamic. And there's a lot of nuances in the process. So we have to develop a very broad disposition in terms of how things work in the realm of devotional service. It's not like the material world at all. It's, com it's diametrically opposed. Okay. I have to get, we have to wrap up because the Dravida Prabhu is getting late. Oh, two on Zoom. Do you need to get going? Okay. Okay, questions on Zoom. Yes, uh, Deva Vrata Prabhu. Uh, uh, Dandavat Pranams, my question is, 
if I may. Okay. In accordance with the Siddhanta of Lord Chaitanya's movement, what is the difference between an intelligent person and a person who is uh, stupid? Yeah, so an intelligent person understands the difference between not understands the difference between matter and spirit and the controller of both. And an, an ignorant person is one who doesn't understand the uh, ultimate goal of life. That, that is your answer? Yes. Oh, thank you very much, Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna. Was, was that okay? <laughs> oh, better than okay. Wonderful answer, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. <laughs> since, since he asked in the context of Lord Chaitanya's teachings, I was thinking of Krishna Varan through Shakrishna Sangupang Astra Parshanam Yagya Sankirtana Prayer Yajanda he's made us so one who has one who is intelligent engages in Sankirtan Yagya yeah. one who is unintelligent yeah, Andrew or Prabhu stupid would make that point. doesn't I Andrew Prabhu would make that point a lot one who has Samedasa they take shelter of the Sankirtan movement there's one more Dravida Prabhu if you have to get going I don't want to hold you up okay one more last one Hare Krishna thank you for the class you said we should take shelter of Lord Chaitanya instead of Krishna. No. And what is the difference between taking shelter of Krishna and Lord Chaitanya? No, it's, not, do you the, do it's that? not that you don't take shelter of, of Krishna. But there's a, there's a way to take shelter of Krishna. And that's through taking shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because to worship Krishna is actually a very... It requires a very rarefied disposition. And... Um, we're very far from that disposition. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu makes it accessible through the chanting of Hare Krishna and through the teaching that he's expounded. And if you want to understand this particular point in detail, the Chaitanya Charitamrita says, Chaitanya Charitamrita Nitya Karapan Yaha Hoite Premananda Bhakti Tattva Gyan. So by reading the Chaitanya Charitamrita, one becomes filled with Krishna Prema and they understand the conclusions of Bhakti Tattva. So they see how Radha and Krishna are non-different, and they simultaneously understand that the appropriate way of approaching Radha and Krishna is through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the more you look into Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the more you see Radha and Krishna, the more you look into Radha and Krishna, the more you see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Where is this verse from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Uh, it's in the Antia I can I can get it for you after class. Suresh, you have a question? Mm. Is that okay, by the way? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, Vanchakopa Thurum Bistriya Kripa Sindhavicha Patitanam Pavani Bio Vaishnavi Vyunamunamaha Vantra Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai